Hi, my name is Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for its in gold fundamental and technical analysis. I hope you're all doing well. And before we get into the video, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this video with your fellow trading colleagues if you find the information that I provide useful every week. So getting into the week ahead, uh, 23rd of January, let me zoom in a little bit. So the week ahead, um, we've got a busy week in the US with releases, including the fourth quarter GDP growth rate. That's definitely going to be watched. Durable goods orders and the PCE uh, price index. That's a measure of inflation. Uh, the Fed's um, preferred measure of inflation, matter of fact, personal income and spending and earnings reports. Also, flash PMI data for January will be published for the US, UK, Japan and Euro area countries. So, again, PMIs um, are quite important when looking at uh, economic um, when looking at the economy. Um, investors will also follow the Bank of Canada interest rate decision, Germany um, um, IFO uh, business climate and GFK consumer confidence, GDP growth rate, South Korea and inflation rate for Australia again um, inflation uh, due to um, if inflation keeps rising then the, um, the the RBA the Reserve Bank of Australia are possibly continuing to uh, high rate so let's see what happens there anyways let's, let, let's get into some technicals and looking at the dollar index starting off on the dollar index as we always do and dollar is dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against the basket of currencies like the euro the pound and the yen and uh, it's always good to keep an eye on the dollar to see what's happening now over the past uh, year or so um, we have had this you know massive run-up and we've had quite a deep uh, pullback and I say a deep pullback depending on you know where you're actually um, uh, taking your run up from right but if we're looking at the start of the move right which was back in May 2021 um, it's probably just looking like maybe somewhere like um, maybe like a fair value move really uh, prices have pulled back to fair value now um, yeah prices are pretty much pulled back to fair value and so um, yeah I guess in the, in the uh, short term uh, we are seeing uh, dollar uh, de devaluation and probably continued dollar devaluation as we get to the end of the, the Fed's hiking cycle. So uh, Federal Reserve to, uh, set to slow uh, set to slow rate hikes again and debate how much further to go. So uh, officials poised for quarter point move with inflation cooling. Uh, tight labor market makes uh, some uneasy about pausing interest rates so there's still debate to be had but overall um, the consensus is that the uh, Fed are going to ease up on rates and um, you know pivot you know potentially uh, um, from um, you know hiking rates to potentially even cutting rates uh, by the end of the year and so um, what you're seeing now is inflation um, you know, coming down, the Fed have less need of a uh, reason, I guess, to to to, to high rates, and so uh, what you're seeing is, uh, an, I guess, an exit of the dollar. Um, also, there's some other contributing factors like um, China reopening from their zero COVID policy, and actually as well, uh, Europe looking um, not looking as as bad as um, you know what was previously previously first thought from um, the end of last year going into this year. Uh, you know, warm weather and all that, um, and low energy prices. So uh, for me, the dollar overall is still a uh, potential sell. Of course, this is data dependent. So if the data comes out supporting uh, the narrative for a strong dollar um, over at least the next, um, you know, maybe few uh, weeks or months, then maybe I might, you know, be a bit more neutral on the dollar. But at the moment, as it stands, I do think that the dollar is, um, you know, the potential uh, most most likely a sell, and I have got a sell bias on the uh, on the dollar for now, and a buy bias on that euro. And so, any pullbacks into you know any kind of supply zone, uh, you can use as confluence. So you're not trading the dollar currency, the DXY. You're just looking at this as confluence, and then looking for any uh, sell trades against certain pairs that you might see on the um, 
you know any any dollar crosses for example if you want to get short on that dollar yen then you're looking for um the the, the dxy to come up into that supply zone and then looking for you know a, a potential supply zone also on the uh dollar yen for some sort of confluence um talking about the dollar yen let's move on to the dollar yen and um the yen uh for me is a buy um especially against uh, the dollar at the moment uh, the expectation that the Bank of Japan is going to change their policy from holding rates to uh, hiking rates uh, via their yield curve control is still in play. So I think any pullback on the yen up into um, uh, this area of supply, I think, is definitely um I say definitely a sell. Depends, obviously, but uh, my bias is to is to sell. So you've got this area here and these areas here. So, um, so yeah, I think these areas are really, really nice uh, for um, for short trades, especially if it comes up into that one three five area. I think that that area is really, really nice for a potential uh, sell. Uh, the um, the Bank of Japan, I think, did kind of surprise by not. Um, uh, well, the Bank of Japan came out uh, earlier in the week and surprised markets by by holding um, actually their monetary policy, which caused prices to kind of spike up and, and the yen to weaken. But then uh, prices, you know, came back down again. And I think we're going to probably end up, you know, somewhere in and around this, um, you know, one three three one three five area before potentially rolling over by the end of the year. Um, looking at the um, the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss. Not a pair I'm interested in uh, trading personally. Actually, both pairs I'm looking to um, to short. So um, yeah, I'm not really keen on this. But if you are, um, you do have a current demand, and that has been touched several times. So I don't expect this to necessarily hold. It could obviously, but if it does, um, I would think personally I'd rather. If I was going to be a buyer of the dollar, I would be a buyer of the dollar down into that. Um, you know the uh, ninety oh five zero point nine oh five area, and if I was going to be a seller, um, you do technically have a supply zone right here as well, um, up into that supply zone. But again, not really keen on this pair. Um, and the yeah, it's made a new low. So I think if anything, you'd really have to um, look for um, any kind of uh, sell trades. Probably up into the first area would be maybe the 93, 0 0.9350s. I think somewhere around there would be, um, or 93 round number would be the um, first area to look for short trades. And then, if anything, to get a better price uh, going higher. Uh, dollar CAD, dollar CAD, um, again, last week's analysis, uh, prices pretty much went um, auctioned, went you know, sideways. Um, and uh, we do have again, as we've uh, pointed out and read earlier, the Canadian dollar um, interest rate decision. I think they are expected to hike rates. I think one more time, so that could also as well um, appreciate the uh, the CAD. So you could see some more downside, but you can see prices pretty much came up into this uh, supply zone daily, the one three five and the underside of that, where you've got also confluence of uh, support turning to resistance. Right. So um, yeah, we're in that supply zone, and so we've seen pretty much you know intraday uh, bounces off of that. Um, but again, I'm not really looking to trade this um, at any point. It's not really on my on my uh, list of things to uh, list of currencies to uh, to trade. But if you are, then I would probably say any any move up to you know the highs around the one three seven, especially those one three seven fifties. I think is is very nice for a uh, short trade technically, and the long trade for the dollar would be down into um, either again the uh, the lower end of this demand zone or the one three one seventies. Moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Um, again, if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar, uh, I think this is last week's analysis, looking at potential for pullback, um, but obviously price hasn't pulled back. Dollar's probably been getting a lot weaker. Zooming out a bit, yeah, you're seeing a level that's been touched you know, once, twice, typically does get um, weaker as it uh, 
um, or less of a bargain, I should say, as it you know starts to come up. So I wouldn't be surprised if you see price you know go to the upside, then pull back as well. So that's what you know you really want to see. If it breaks past that supply zone, and you want to be a buyer of the New Zealand dollar due to potential risk on in China reopening and uh, selling the dollar, then I'd do that and wait for this to um, this area here. I would say is the, the demand zone is now starting from around there. Uh, yeah, from about there, before looking at getting uh, long demand, All right? And moving on to the pound dollar, right? So the pound dollar. Uh, the pound has been um, a bit of a strange one, <clears throat> to be fair. Um, like the uh, the euro, um, there's you know a lot of the negative data has kind of. Um, uh, gone away in fact and um, you know the pound is actually now expected to not be as bad as previously uh, thought again this is due to warm weather and some surprises um, economically but I still think it's the you know one of the worst economies uh, the UK inflation also came out this week and it eases for the second month in a row um, uh, in the sign that peak has passed so peak inflation has passed a slowdown driven by cheaper fuel and clothing food prices Jeremy Hunt um, plans to cut inflation in half this year and so uh, UK inflation dipped for a second month in December boosting hopes that the worst cost of living crisis which obviously affects GDP and a generation may be starting to ease and so um, yeah we could see obviously lower inflation <clears throat> and inflation come you know start to start to retract which would uh, really help um, I think all economies really uh, to be fair so um, so yeah looking at the pound um, uh, that also puts pressure I think as well on the um, I think the, the Bank of England um, are looking to hike by I think 50 basis points I don't think inflation has come down enough for them to want to warrant a 25 basis point uh, hike I think they're trying to get in as many hikes as they can before um, um, before you know to try and get inflation to come down and while the economy can manage it now one of the things I was also uh, talking about in the uh, in the group is that what could affect uh, the economy next next month and the next coming months is that the UK suffers worse strikes in 30 years with more action ahead. So they, you know, 467,000 working days lost due to industrial action in November and walkouts intensify in December and January over pay squeeze. And so um, lots of strike action going on, um, which um, no doubt will affect, um, you know, the economy. Uh, I'll be very surprised if it doesn't, if you don't see it in the data, um, and you know industrial strike cost of living uh, you know being uh, the reason for really the catalyst for the strikes right so ultimately that data has to come out um, you know this uh, <clears throat> uh, in the coming in the coming months so um, we'll see what happens because with a cost of living crisis and the Bank of England hiking rates at the same time um, doesn't doesn't feel good right especially if they don't get it resolved uh, soon so yep we're up into this area where we could start to see a potential reversal who knows but I think we um, for me I'm not again I'm not really looking to trade this pair not looking to buy the dollar um, or buy the pound so um, but technically I think this is a very nice area to look for any kind of short trades but that's just technically um, or if you're looking for any kind of pullbacks on the, uh, the pound dollar to buy the pound against the dollar um, again that being more of a reversal of fortune for the pound um, then you're looking at uh, shit, I don't know why I deleted that you're looking at pullbacks into um, you know an area the first demand zone being uh, around there right so uh, yeah so the first pullback being um, into this demand zone before looking at getting before looking at getting long so um, I think this is a great place to just remind uh, you guys that um, enrollment to the uh, private mentoring group, Discord Mentor Group, starts on the 6th of February reopens, and it's going to be only we're only reopen for about five days. Probably going to close it on the 10th. Uh, so 16 days left, and if you do want to join, then um, yeah, the 6th of February is when I am opening. Uh, you'll get access to 
uh, the Discord group, plenty of information, plenty of channels you can see all here. Um, we've got our discussion rooms as well, trading videos, and you can see uh, some of the nice things that uh, the traders have been saying, uh, lifetime members have been saying about uh, myself and uh, Trading 180. Uh, you get access to the fundamental analysis spreadsheet also as well, which gives you um, the pairs and my my bias, right? Of whether I'm long or, or short on a currency pair, right? And so um, you get access to that as well as uh, hundreds and hundreds of videos, as well as a weekly live call on Wednesday. We hold a Zoom call every Wednesday uh, live so that you can ask your questions. We go over uh, the market as well as uh, private uh, weekend videos. So. Um, which go into a lot more detail about the technicals and the fundamentals as well. So don't forget uh, you've got that. So check out the website and um, 16 days left before we open. So getting back to now the Euro, the Euro dollar. Uh, we have Euro dollar, I've been saying, trying to get long on this uh, Euro dollar. Now for me, this is a bit prices are a bit too high, a bit too expensive for me, a bit too rich. I'm looking for a pullback into at least a decent demand zone. Not sure whether we'll get it. If we do get it, then brilliant. If not, yeah, then and it goes higher, then it just creates a, a demand zone. And you're waiting for a pullback into that area there before looking at getting long. Now, again, um, I would say um, uh, fundamentally, uh, what happened this week is there was um, some members that basically came out uh, in an interview basically saying that they were a bit dovish on the uh, on the euro in terms of interest rates and they thought that uh, Christine Lagarde may want to uh, hike sorry uh, cut rates or not uh, hike rates as much as previously thought and you saw in fact this drop and I'll go down to the intraday you saw uh, a, a drop in the euro. <clears throat> uh, sorry, where are where are we? Uh, da, 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 da. We were yeah. So here it was. It was around Tuesday the seventeenth. So you saw this drop in the euro, and then on Wednesday, yeah. So that was really the talk. So the yields drop, which affects uh, currencies after a report about slower ECB tightening, <clears throat> and then. Um, pretty much Wednesday at the uh, uh, World Economic Forum. Um, uh, Villaroy says that the guards half point uh, ECB guidance is still valid. So again, the rumors came out that it was gonna be 0 0.25 or 25 basis points. And then Villaroy comes out and says, in fact, you know, that, you know, there are, uh, it should be still 50 basis points. And then Christine Lagarde herself came out and said, <clears throat> that it would be uh, still, you know, it's still valid, and so then you uh, you you got the um, uh, the move again back higher um, uh, for the euro, right? You started to appreciate uh, um, back, and you're seeing prices go to the upside. So um, for me, I'm still waiting for a pullback, a decent pullback, in order for me to get uh, long on this uh, euro dollar. So my bias hasn't changed for now. And um, yeah, let's see what happens there. Uh, Aussie dollar, Australian dollar, US dollar, and going back up to the daily. Um, we did get a bit of a pullback into an area of demand, which was here before potentially bouncing. I was looking for a deeper pullback, to be fair. I still think that we're in an, a bit of an expensive area. We do have, in fact, a uh, supply zone so in case you do want to buy the um the, do the us dollar then you have these zones right here but again my bias is actually to be a buyer looking for a deeper pullback although i do think that this did uh touch the uh, actually didn't quite touch the uh the um monthly moving uh fair value i tend to like to trade around that monthly moving fair value as confluence because it just gives a perspective of you know where value actually is and if you're buying above then you're buying really at an expensive area so any pullbacks into that area but demand zones are, are, are obviously the uh the priority so um for me uh, that demand zone is, is decent but i just wanted a bit more 
uh, fair value, monthly fair value, long term fair value to come into play as well, which I think it might. If it comes down a bit, then I think I will try to get um, into a long trade on this Aussie uh, dollar. And those are really the areas you're looking for, whether to buy or sell. Um, moving towards the Aussie yen, and again, I think this Aussie yen, um, I was saying last week that I was looking for probably more of a short trade, didn't get an opportunity to. Um, prices spiked up in the morning, it's like two, three in the morning, and um, you know, on the uh, on the news that uh, the, the Bank of Japan were not, um, you know, hiking rates, but then it just went straight back down again. So no opportunity there, but this does present, um, uh, for anyone that understands, uh, a bit of a stop hunt level, or you're looking at, again, just a move, um, to the upside so you can see you know my last week's uh, uh, forecast um, as far as an opportunity was correct it just mean but you just couldn't get involved in it so um, ultimately you know you're looking probably a bit higher before looking to get uh, short if you are looking to get short but again this is not a pair that I'm really interested in to be fair because you've got two really opposing forces you've got a potentially um, strong yen and a potentially strong Aussie dollar um, going into you know 2023 uh, so again not for me I'm not really looking to trade this pair at all uh, and gold so gold um, as we've uh, uh, been talking about for ages and in fact um, I remember back in back in um, when was it it was back in June I think it was um, if you go to June's videos, we were talking about central banks to increase gold holdings over crisis concerns. And so the, the signals were there to really get long on gold, um, you know, uh, 8th of June. And so, um, you know, a lot of traders don't understand really that, um, you know, central banks and big institutions have to buy well ahead of time, right? They're buying way ahead of time. And so, when they started buying, they started, you know, cost averaging in, right? So as prices are going down, who's doing the buying? Who's managing to buy gold for cheap? And they understood at the time that prices should be somewhere around here in the next six to 12 months, which they've proven obviously to be correct, right? And this is what I was saying even all the way back then. So go to June, July, August uh, videos on YouTube and you'll see when, when I do my gold analysis, this is exactly what I've been saying. And so, um, <clears throat> it takes time this is how fundamentals work and if you can get ahead of the curve then pretty much you can benefit um, now it's just really waiting for pullbacks which price really hasn't pulled back but if you do get any kind of pullbacks into demand zones um, I think that's going to be decent uh, uh, for a buy especially with you know the dollar um, the devaluing and depreciating and potentially heading into a recession although that remains to be seen anyways guys that's it for this week um, take care. I hope you have a great trading week and uh, speak to you soon.